Hi everyone, Aaron here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about how super Scientologist Grant Cardone is ripping off everyone who invests in his real estate funds. Grant has reinvented himself these last many years. Uh, instead of being a sales trainer or a motivational guru, he's reinvented himself as a real estate investor. And instead of selling you advice or expertise on how to invest in real estate, Grant's real estate advice is just to give him your money and, and let him invest it for you. Grant uses his significant reach on social media to convince unaccredited investors to turn their money over to him. Grant relies on the age old techniques of pyramid scheme like business models of just relying on pure momentum and enthusiasm. Grant wants to razzle and dazzle you with how fast he's been able to raise money. We've raised $223 million. Do you raise from accredited 20, investors or in, unaccredited both? Anyone? In 20 months. You know what that takes. That's great. So what's 220 million. I'm going to raise a billion dollars in cash in the next. Go, can you go back the next, to the, what, the next your, 18 what, months? What, what, one what, billion. What? Hey, one billion dollars in cash. <laughs> Grant literally wants you to believe that the very fact he's been able to convince people to give him money um, vouches for the legitimacy of the investment opportunity itself. You know, the exact same thing Bernie Madoff could have said at any single point in his career right before everything came crumbling down. He's raising the vast majority of this investment capital from people who have fallen into the sales funnels of his various businesses. Most of these businesses, instead of selling actual products or expertise, are selling hope they're selling hype they're selling the idea that if you are just more like grant you can become a billionaire grant's entire shtick and persona reeks of the mlm pyramid scheme like sleazy sales tactics that to those who don't live in that world are very obvious and transparent but for those who get caught up in it it really is a confidence game and grant is leveraging that confidence to bilk investors out of money there has been some fantastic reporting on Grant's shenanigans over uh, by Jeffrey Augustine on his blog, The Scientology Money Project. Jeff publishes uh, these investigations uh, and this reporting into Grant's activities on The Scientology Money Project because Grant Cardone uh, is a prolific supporter, financial supporter of Scientology. Grant has been a Scientologist for decades. Grant has donated, I believe, over $10 million to Scientology. Grant has actually been a, a big recruiter, getting other people into Scientology. Jeff's done some great reporting on the lawsuits that have been filed against Grant and his real estate funds. So totally aside from any specific claims made in lawsuits or claims made by investors or whatever, I'm gonna give you three things that Grant is doing with his fund that to me, I define as a ripoff. I would call this ripping off investors, totally aside from how the courts or legislators or regulators would view it. And that is also a perfect time to take a quick break and talk about a real estate professional who isn't out there running a pyramid scheme on investors. The sponsor of today's video, me. Was that a good segue? If you're looking to buy or sell a home anywhere in the Tampa Bay area, and if you would like to work with me, message me at Aaron at dreamrealty.com. All right, back to the video. When Grant finds an apartment complex that he wants the real estate fund to buy, instead of using the fund's money to buy the property, Grant uses his own personal money to buy the property and then sells the property to the fund for a higher price and pockets the profit. He is literally front running his own investors on deals that he identifies for his investors. The next way that Grant is ripping off his investors, he personally gets paid from the fund, by the fund, a transaction fee for every property Grant acquires for the fund. This is not a performance fee. This is not taking a, a percent of the profits. This is if Grant buys a hundred million dollar property, Grant gets paid a, a 1%, a $1 million fee. In other words, Grant is incentivized to purchase properties for as high a dollar value as possible. And the third way Grant is ripping off his investors is he is charging the fund interest on the personal money that he used to acquire the property in the first place. Even, even if Grant were to disclose all of these three, uh, each of these three factors in the investment paperwork, even if these things are disclosed, it seems to me that if a couple of these incentives were piggybacked on each other, that it would just be 
um, literally legal fraud and I don't know how he would get away with it even if it was disclosed. When you have incentives that are lined up in this way that incentivize Grant to operate in his own best interests to the detriment of his investors, that is a ripoff. So let me show you some of the details as Jeff Augustine has reported them on the Scientology Money Project. Sussman Godfrey's class action lawsuit against Grant Cardone alleges undisclosed self-dealing and false and misleading claims. Okay, so let's jump down here to this part. It says, the offering statements represented that Cardone Capital would secure the necessary financing before obtaining properties on behalf of the funds. The statement was material, this statement was materially misleading because instead of obtaining loans to finance the acquisition of the properties, Grant Cardone personally, through entities that he owns and controls, purchased the properties from third parties before selling them to the funds. Okay, it continues. Mortgage documents show that Grant Cardone, signatory for Cardone Capital, took out a $60.125 million mortgage on the property on September 27, 2018, but Fund 5 investors did not acquire the property until January 1st, 2019. So Grant bought the property on September 27th, 2018, and just over three months later flipped the property to the fund that he's managing. Moving on, 56, the operating statements further described that the purchase price of any property or real estate investment acquired from or sold to an affiliated party will be based upon the fair market value of the asset established by a third party appraisal. This is materially misleading because Cardone Capital did not obtain a third party appraisal or fairness opinion for those real estate investments. It sold to the equity funds. With the exception of one property, Grant Cardone has failed to disclose the acquisition price for any of the properties he sold to the funds. Cardone Capital has also failed to disclose whether Grant Cardone acquired the properties at a different acquisition price than uh, that paid by investors in the funds. This is such obviously self-dealing that even if for some reason this ended up not being a violation of the law, investors would be absolutely crazy to turn their money over to Grant. Grant is fleecing his investors. Okay, it continues. Not only did Grant Cardone purchase properties with his own money before selling them to the funds, he stated that he was loaning the money to investors and charged the funds interest. Unbelievable. It continues, the aggregate principal balance loaned by Grant Cardone to acquire the investments amounted to approximately $42,159,000. Each loan pays 6% interest rate. Why in the world would Grant use his own money to purchase a property instead of the fund money uh, for any reason other than to personally enrich himself, to rack up fees, to rack up interest payments, uh, let's jump ahead a little bit here. Cardone Capital's failure to disclose that Grant Cardone would charge investors interest on Cardone's loans to acquire properties is a material omission because investors were contributing capital to provide the equity to acquire interests in the properties. There was no apparent need for Grant Cardone to loan money that investors were providing to the funds and then to charge investors for the loan. To the extent Cardone Capital intended to charge investors additional fees relating to acquiring properties, the fees should have been disclosed. And this is a good one, even though it's a bit long. 61, similarly, Cardone Capital failed to disclose that Grant Cardone had already acquired Cardone Delray member LLC, which owns Atlantic Delray Beach LLC DBA 10X living at Delray, failed to disclose that he already owned the property at the time of the offering statement. This statement is materially misleading because it implies that the investors were paying Grant Cardone an acquisition fee for his ability to target properties for investment. When in fact, Cardone Capital was selling investors' interests in funds for which he already owned the properties. So there's no reason for Grant to charge an acquisition fee because he had already acquired the property. It is further misleading because had Cardone Capital disclosed its acquisition of 10X Living at Delray, investors could have evaluated the merit of the property prior to investing in Fund 5. 
Finally, the statement is misleading because Cardone charged investors interest for Cardone, quote, contributing his equity and loaning the balance needed to purchase the property, even though Cardone Capital had acquired 10X Living at Delray months before Fund 5 invested in the property. Absolutely incredible. Jeff Augustine uh, makes an observation here. Based upon the allegations, it seems Cardone Capital's equity funds may be nothing more than captive entities that can only purchase properties from Grant Cardone. As Cardone is both the seller and the buyer, this is an inherent conflict of interest. Cardone has long claimed that there is no middleman in his deals. However, to the extent that he purchases properties and then resells them to his captive entities, he himself becomes the middleman and makes money as such. And that is the crux of Grant's business model. He is essentially just collecting fees as a middleman. Grant's compensation in relation to these funds has nothing to do with performance. It just has to do with churn. Buying properties, selling them to the fund, pocketing the difference, charging interest, collecting acquisition fees. He is not responsible to his investors for performance in order to get paid. And let's keep it real, that is why Grant is pursuing this business model so heavily and getting away from the business that he used to be in. Grant is a charlatan. Grant is a con man. Grant sells confidence. Investors would do very well to steer clear of anything with Grant Cardone's name on it. Okay, if we look at this other article that Jeff published uh, March 2021, Scientologist Grant Cardone forces his investors into arbitration, strips them of the rights to a jury trial. Uh, well, that sounds very familiar. That's pretty much exactly what Scientology tries to do with uh, any former members who uh, sue them for abuse. Let's just briefly look at this. Just as the Church of Scientology requires its members to sign contracts of adhesion in which they agree to binding arbitration, waive their rights to a jury trial, and waive many other legal rights, so too does Scientologist Grant Cardone. Uh, investors waive their legal right to sue Cardone Capital in a jury trial conducted in a court of law. Investors waive their legal right to form or join a class action lawsuit against Cardone Capital. Investors agree to binding arbitration in Delaware in the event of a dispute. Statistically, arbitrations generally go against investors. Uh, while investors may have invested their life savings into this fund, Grant Cardone has absolutely no obligation whatsoever to spend his time managing any of the Cardone funds. Oh, I see. There's a disclosure in the offering uh, paperwork manager has no exclusive duty to the company. I mean, you would just have to be insane to turn your money over to a guy who has set the investment scheme up in a way where he holds all the cards, has complete control, is able to self-deal. You can't sue. It is all set up to benefit him ahead of his investors and to protect him ahead of his investors. You would have to be insane to give this guy your money. Jeff says, bottom line, Grant Cardone's model is to minimize his personal financial risks at all times, maximize his income through taking fees on the initial sale, uh, fees on acquisition, fees on management, and the sale of the properties after 10 years. Cardone does these things while remaining in complete control of Cardone Capital and its funds. The undisclosed self-dealing is one reason why Cardone Capital is being sued, and Grant Cardone is being sued as an individual. As we have stated before, Grant Cardone will piss down your leg and tell you it's raining. It is interesting to me that he is being sued, uh, that these lawsuits were filed, even though the investors apparently signed something um, uh, waiving their right to do so. I have not been able to find anything, and maybe I just haven't done a good job looking, I haven't been able to find anything detailing uh, uh, the result of these suits, whether they were thrown out, whether they were settled. Maybe one of the reasons I've not come up with anything is because um, it is a function of the arbitration agreements and maybe any confidentiality agreements involved in uh, 
in the results of, of a binding arbitration. I just can't say. So, you know, this video isn't, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to do some comprehensive, definitive documentation of everything that's wrong with Grant Cardone and, uh, and his self-dealing and what's wrong with his funds. But the information is out there on the internet. I wanted to do kind of a summary. I wanted to show that uh, there has been a hell of a lot of criticism, a hell of a lot of exposure about this. And yet Grant has continued to be able to raise money. And I think it's just a testament uh, to the fact that a sucker is born every minute. You know, this whole industry that Grant exists in, the, the Gary Vanderchuk, you know, motivational industry, uh, preys on people. It preys on people's insecurities. It preys on people's feelings uh, of inadequacy. And Grant, Grant knows what he's doing. He's putting his help. Grant is not as rich as he claims to be. He calls himself a billionaire. Grant is not a billionaire. Grant is 100% not a billionaire, but it's part of his confidence game. It's part of his shtick. It's part of what he's selling to people. He's selling people bullshit and then saying, if you give me your money, I will help you become like me. But really, he's just fleecing people. It's really disgusting. And it's it's almost a perfect marriage. Grant is like the perfect guy to be in Scientology because Scientology does to its people what Grant does to his customers and his investors. So steer clear of this guy. Don't give this guy your money. Uh, that's all I've got on this. Thank you all for watching. Thanks. Big thanks to all of you who watch until the very end. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. If you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!